So let's go to the command line and quickly finish up the configuration on the remaining routers here. Now I got a router one. On the router one, I'm going to configure a static route from router one to reach this network via this route. And then from router one to reach this route, I'm, I'm going to prefer the shortest path here. And then from router one to reach this network, I'm writing this route. So already on the router one, I have finished the configurations. Let me just go to router two and router three and finish up the configurations on both the routers. So I got the command line on the router two here. On the router two, if I verify the show IP interface brief, all the interfaces are pre-configured with their own respective IP addresses. And then I'm going to configure the router two in such a way that uh, shortest path I'm going to use. So from the router two to reach one dot network, the shortest path is via 10.001. So I'm using the next top all the sites. And I'm going to write from router two to reach 192.168.3. network, that is router three LAN. And the shortest path will be 11.002 in my scenario. And then to reach uh, WAN interface, that is 10 dot network. Uh, sorry, 10 dot network is not is directly connected, so I'm going to write 12 dot network 255.000. I'm writing the next stop as 10.001. So on the router one, if you verify show IP route static, now I can see the for to reach the 12 door network and the 1 door network, it's going via router one, and then to reach 3 door network, it's going directly to router three. Now let's go to the router three command line and do the same thing on the router three as well. Now on the router three, if you verify show IP interface brief, so already the routers are pre-configured with IP addresses. So I'm going to write 192.168 one dot network. From the router three to reach a one dot network, I'm going to use 12.001, the direct link from three to one, and then to reach 192.168 two dot network. Again, I'm going to use the direct link 255.255.255.0, and then the next hop is 11.001. And to reach 10 dot network, I can use any one of this route. So I'm going to use 11.001 via router 2. So now if you verify from the router 1 or router 3, router 3 I can ping to 192.168.1.100 1 which is the gateway interface of the router 1. Even I can ping to the router 2 gateway as well. So automatically I should be able to ping to the LAN interfaces or the LAN devices in the uh, whatever the device in the LAN. Now the next thing is uh, what we'll do is once we are done with the static routing the next thing what we'll do is we'll try to go and verify some of the other advanced options of the static routing now we call them as floating static routes now one of the major drawback with this normal static routing is everything has to be manually configured by the administrator but at the same time there is no redundancy in general so what happens now the router one in my scenario from the router one to reach the router two lan interface i'm using this route so what happens if that route fails? Now it will be a single point of failure. Now to overcome that, what we can do is we can write multiple static routes on this, on the same router, that is router one for, for this destination, that is 182.168.2. network. We can also write one more static route via alternate route. And then what we can do is we can configure something called administrative distance, manual administrative distance, where I can tell that the administrative distance to reach this two door network, it will be default is one. This is the one administrative distance. And I can manually configure the administrative distance on the other route as 10 or higher than one, maybe two also. And what it is going to do is in this scenario, if the router one will try to forward the traffic via this route, because for the same destination, there are two, two or more routes are given. It's going to decide the best route based on the administrative distance. So this will be the best route by default. And due to some reason, if that route fails, in that case, automatically the routing table will be installed with the second route automatically. And the router one will be still forwarding the traffic via router three and then router two. It will be able to access the resources. Now, now in this way, what we can do is we can provide redundancy. And this concept, we call it as a floating static routes where we can have multiple static routes for the same destination by, by using different administrative distance values. So let's try to implement the same thing in our scenario here. In our scenario also, it's a single point of failure. Let's say uh, on the router one, 
I'm going to shut down the link connecting between router 1 to router 2. Interface S0 by 0. I'll shut down the link. Now if I give show IP route, show IP route static, you can see whatever the routes dependent via that I'm not able to reach 2 dot network in this scenario. You can see the 2 dot network entry has been removed because this interface is down and this is the route which is configured by the administrator now. And I want to ensure that if this link fails, it has to install automatic routes, the alternate route. So let's go and add the alternate static routes on the router 1. So I'll make the interface back to up first and then we'll, we'll configure some static routes and then we'll again shut down the interface for verification. Now if I make the interface up, now we can see the route has been installed here on the route of 1. And then I'm going to configure the alternate route saying that IP route to reach 192.168.2. network. I'm going to configure one more route. So for 2. network already it is pre-configured. I'm going to configure via 12.0.0.2. 0.2. 12.0.0.2. And then I can change the administrative distance value. So the default it is going to take one because I'm defining the next hop and if you define on both it's going to install both the routes with the same administrative distance and it may be forwarding via both the routes. That's for load balancing. But in my scenario I'm going to use 10. Now the same thing I'm going to do for a 3 door network also. 3 door network also 192.168 3 door network 255.255.255.0 and then from the router 1 to reach this 3 dot network the default route i configure direct route that is via 12.002 now i want to configure the backup route that is via 10.002 and administrative distance will be 10. now these are all the backup routes and if you verify show ip route static we still have the main routes okay but if if, if that interface fails it will automatically install the alternate routes let's let's shut down the link now if i shut down this s0 by 0 interface if I say shut down, now I should see all the traffic will be going via alternate route. Now if you just try to verify here, show IP route static. Now I can see here, uh, because I configured alternate route for 2 door network and the 3 door network, now I can see all the traffic is going via 12.002 and this network. And if the interface comes back again, let's, let's make the interface back to up. No shutdown command. And if I verify show IP route static, it will take some time. Let's let's give some time for verification. And I can see it's back to the previous one. Now, if you want, you can shut down the other link as well on the router one interface S0 by one. If I shut down that link, now if I give show IP route static, now even to reach the three door network, we configure the direct route. But it is not using the direct route because that link is down. Now it's going via this route. Now in this way, what we can do is we can add multiple static routes on the same router by using different administrative distance values. So I just configured only on the router one in my scenario. Probably you can go to router two and router three and configure the same to verify the reachability issues. But here I'm not I'm not using that. Just verification of the routes by using the routing table. So this way we can have redundant links. So normally uh, this is something automatically done by the dynamic routing protocols. So that's the reason we, we normally prefer to use dynamic routing protocols rather than using the static routes. But we just need to know an option where if you, if you have for the same destination, if you have multiple static routes configured um, for providing the redundancy, we can provide multiple static routes for redundancy in a small size networks in, the, in this way. Now one of the major drawback with the static routing is uh, it's, it's only applicable for small size networks where you have to manually configure the route for each and every destinations and administrator must, must clearly have a good understanding on how the networks are connected, how the devices are connected in order to ensure that you, con you configure a proper routing information. So if any changes happens in the network, it's going to affect the complete network because if I configure one route from this side, if that route fails, administrator has to manually configure the alternate route, which is going to be more overhead on the, on the administrator to configure the routes. Now, there are some very basic advantages with the static routing is there is no need, no processing overhead.
because the routers they don't send and receive any advertisements and there's no bandwidth utilization for any kind of updates and also it adds some security where the route is pre-configured by the administrator but if you just consider the disadvantages you know there are a lot of disadvantages with the static routing now that's the reason we always prefer to go with uh, with a dynamic routing in in case of production networks where it will automatically use the second best route if any one of the route fails we don't need to really go to each and every router and configure the floating static routes but that is an option you should know now the next thing we'll talk about default routing the default routing is used for routing your traffic for unknown destinations that is internet so let's say in my lan i'm using 192.168.1.0 network and the user in my lan is trying to access a yahoo server or the gmail server the servers on the internet probably uh, the our router or these users don't know where they are but they will simply forward the packet to the gateway and the gateway will simply forward the packet to the isp and the isp will connect to internet and then it will allow you to route your packets over the internet so if you want to send any traffic for any unknown destinations we can we can use default routing and to configure the default routing we can simply say ip route 0000 which means whatever be the destination and then 0000 whatever be the subnet mask and the next hop ip address now default routing uh, helps in minimizing the size of the routing table and it's a last preferred route in the routing table so by default if you are using static default routes then probably you will see them as s s asterisk which is a representation of the default routing and then you'll see 0.0.0.0 with slash 0 now default routing is something we can use uh, in case of ISP connections like in the production networks let's say if you have two ISP connections two ISP links and you're connecting to ISP 1 and we are going to configure the default route normally by using this command IP route 0000 0000 and the next stop is 1.1.1.2 so all the traffic destined for internet will go from the router 1 and the router 1 will send it to ISP 1 and then it will reach us the internet but there might be cases where what happens if the link goes down or ISP something goes down you know the link goes down or you're not able to reach via ISP so I want to ensure that my traffic should automatically redirect from the ISP too so I need, I need to have a backup link now in this kind of scenarios also we can have some floating default routes where we can say that uh, for any unknown destinations it has to go via 1.1.1.2 and the default administrative distance will be one because it's a kind of static routing and if that fails due to some reason the routing table router will install automatically a backup route from this one okay so that that's how we can use default routing in a normal cases so if you want to verify the same thing just in the command line we can simply go and configure ip route uh, here I don't have a real ISP connection so I'm not getting into a practical verification completely on this we can just go and say 0000 0000 and the next hop address as 10.002 now once we add this if I give show IP route static you will see this as s asterisk a route installed in the routing table now if a user sitting in the LAN if it tries to trace or if you try to ping to 172.16 network which is not present the packet will go to router 2 and then it will drop because anyway i don't have a real 172.16 network present here but any unknown packets will be sent to to the next router that is in our case it will be isp router and then isp will take care of your packet to reach the respective yahoo servers now in this kind of scenarios we can also have a backup route where you can have two isp connections and by changing the administrative distance we can use this as a primary link and in case if that primary link fails it will automatically get back to the secondary link like in my scenario also i can go to router one command line i can say one more default route ip route 0000 0000 i'm giving the next stop as 12.002 so normally by default let me just i i forgot to add that administrative distance here so if it's a show ip route static and let me shut down this interface for verification as zero by zero and let's assume that the s0 by zero interface goes down
Now, I don't see both the routes because the reason is actually uh, both the interface are in shutdown state here. That's the reason. So let me make the interface S0 by 1 up. No shutdown command. And if I give show IP route static, I should see the interface has to be up. Now once the interface is up, now I can see the default route automatically goes via alternate route. Now I'm not getting the output because the reason was the both the interfaces was in shutdown state. In my previous task, I have I made the interface S0 by 1 also in the shutdown state. So right now it is up. Now in, in my scenario, if your primary link fails, it's going to use, you can see the administrative distance is 10 here for the default route. The default will be 1, so it's going to install this route. If that interface is back again, let's make the interface S0 by 0 back to no shutdown state. And if I verify show IP route static, now the interface is up. And if I verify show IP route static, now you can see the default route, it automatically installed via 10.002, not via 12.002. Now in this way, what we can do is we can have some floating default routes uh, if you're connecting uh, if you're connecting to multiple ISP connections. Now this is a more common place where we can we will be using something like floating default routes. But in case of static routing, we generally don't use it because in case of static routing, we have an alternate option of using dynamic routing protocols.